Hello and welcome back to the third rail. If you follow the channel, you'll probably remember a video I made about a cheap and neglected auction find a few weeks back. It featured a locomotive I had bought for parts, and upon closer inspection of its cosmetic defects, I decided to make an attempt at fixing them. This sort of worked, to my surprise, and once I was finished with it, the locomotive wouldn't have won a beauty contest, but it looked much better than I would have expected. There was one thing I couldn't improve upon. The inscriptions on the cab and at the front of the boiler had faded to the point they had even disappeared in places. This is what I am going to try and fix in this video. You might also call this, I'll try and put more lipstick on the pig. I have never done this before, so let's see how I get on. Looking at YouTube videos on the topic, people do things differently, but they all use decals. So I decided to look for a complete set of those for the BR184, which is the type of locomotive we are dealing with here. This proved a bit difficult. There are quite a few websites selling decals, but I couldn't find a set matching my loco. I would have had to buy five or six sets from various sources to get most of what I needed, but not everything. Some sites also offer a bespoke service where you basically pick an existing set and pay a fixed fee for every single little change you need. Either way, the resulting total cost would have been prohibitive and come close to or even exceed the price I paid for the loco. So I gave up on the decals. But looking at prototype pictures, I was reminded that the Deutsche Reichsbahn used plates for all inscriptions on their locomotives before World War II. Acid-etched brass signs are used frequently in modelling, so I decided to look into this. After a bit of googling, a company called Beckert Modelbau, based in Germany, caught my attention. They produce all sorts of etched signage, including complete sets for locomotives in many scales. These sets are custom made to order, based on details and options provided using an order form or in plain text via email. There is a lead time for this type of things of about a few weeks. After a quick exchange of emails, I placed my order using the information from the original Merklin model. The total cost for this was 34 euros all in, which I think is quite reasonable. Three weeks later, the order arrived. And I am now ready for the installation. First, let me open the letter the plates came in. There we go. This is tiny. We have all we need for the cab and the boiler on one side. And I also ordered manufacturer plates that will go on the cylinders. These plates are also custom. The shot is a bit overexposed here. Let's have a quick look at the plates against the side of the loco. Ah, it's much better. Nice gold color and there are little gold rivets in the corners of each plate. Everything definitely looks the part and it seems to have the correct dimensions. I just need to figure out how to install everything now. As I have never done this before, I am relieved to see some instructions have been included with the sets. They include a few steps to follow as well as the suggestions of products to use. I have bought these already. We have some Yuhu all-purpose solvent-free glue on one side and an adding black paint pen for touch-ups if needed. Then, according to the instructions, all that needs to be done is to apply a bit of glue to the surface of the loco, then drop the plate and press it down, adjust the position with tweezers or a cocktail stick, remove the excess of glue with a wet sponge, and we're done. Do they do wet sponge for HO? Hmm, we'll see. Let's have a go. It all sounded simple, but it isn't as easy as it seems. 
first of all, it's quite difficult to apply the glue in quantities small enough to limit the amount of overflow. So it got quite messy pretty quickly. On the plus side, the overflow is easy to remove with the tip of a cocktail stick and the glue dries very slowly, so there is a lot of time to correct the position of a plate if needed. It kind of got easier after each sign, and after an hour I had completed the entire side. We can see the state of the loco at that stage. It is messy in places, but I think I'll be able to tidy things up a bit after the glue has had time to dry a bit more. Anything I would do at that stage would risk displacing a few things. So I left this side to dry for an hour or so, and then I started on the other side, but I tweaked things a bit to make the handling easier this time. I started by applying the glue to the reverse side of the plate instead of the locomotive. I then attached the other side of the plate to a tacky stick. It's basically the end of a cocktail stick dipped in a bit of glue and left to dry until just tacky. This made transferring and placing the plates much easier. Then uh, I could simply press the plate down and reposition it as needed, then leave things to dry while I was installing the next plate. After that, I went back to remove the excess of glue and I used the tip of a cocktail stick for that. These tweaks didn't prevent the odd slippage, but they definitely made things much easier and quicker to install. And after 35 minutes, the other side was done. I used the same method to attach the front number, but I had to first sand down the cast number plate rivets on the model. My camera wasn't running at the time, I hadn't seen, sorry, but you'll see the result in a minute. I let everything dry for an hour or so, then I did another tidy up, pushing glue residues off with a cocktail stick and using a damp cotton bird to clean the surfaces here and there. And here is the end result. It's not bad, isn't it? Is it perfect? Definitely not, but it definitely looks much better. And this is a very welcome surprise. Now, let's see how it looks on the layout. It's very nice, isn't it? As long as you don't look too close, of course. I think I'd do a few things differently if I had to do this all over again. For a start, I'd respray the cap surfaces. I'd use different tools to cut and handle the plates or to apply the glue. The lessons learned box is filling up but this is an option I'll definitely bear in mind for the future. If you have made it that far, thank you very much for watching. This is much appreciated. So are all the subscriptions, likes and shares you have been kind enough to give me. I find them very rewarding, they keep me going, and they are also the best way to help the channel in reaching a wider audience. Many thanks again for this. Bye for now.